Two of the business world's fastest movers, Sony and Microsoft, are vying for the supremacy of the booming video games industry. The game's market is a cultural phenomenon. As a form of entertainment, it's been vastly underrated, and yet in terms of sales, it's bigger than movies, bigger than videos, and fast catching up with the music business. And as current market leaders, Sony are in pole position. Downtown San Francisco, Sony's Metrion Center. The release of PlayStation 2 has been staggered around the world. Now, five weeks before the UK launch, America has its turn. A thousand games addicts have queued up all day, desperate for the new machine. Doors open at midnight, but until then, people in the line endure some old-fashioned entertainment. You guys are close to the front of the line, aren't you? We're getting there, yeah, we're about 40th. So. About 40th. So when did you have to get here in the morning to be 40th in line? About 6.30. About 6.30 in the morning, so you guys have been waiting well over 12 hours for this new PlayStation. The new console is Sony's most important product ever. At its peak, the original PlayStation accounted for 40% of Sony's profits. These are all being ready for the people outside who've been waiting for a while, so when they get in here, they'll be ready to go as soon as The first PlayStation still dominates the $20 billion global games market. The new console has to deliver this and more. So far, so good. Well, we're obviously very excited, and I have to say it's the biggest thing that um, we've ever done. I mean, PlayStation, when we launched in 95, was a huge success, but is a scale so much less significant than on PlayStation 2. Demand in Japan has outstripped anyone's forecasts. So they've currently sold 3.5 million PlayStation 2s in Japan. They launched six months ago, and they've managed to sell 3.5 million, which took them around about two and a half years to do on PlayStation 1. First in line is Paul Krivsder, young, cash-rich, and with ample free time, he is the perfect PlayStation customer for Sony. Sony aren't the only players in the game's market. Two other Japanese companies, Sega and Nintendo, are also in the business, but they have sold mainly to children. So in claiming the cash of mostly male, 20-somethings like Paul, Sony have left the rest for dead in the adult games market. Until now. PlayStation's grip on this grown-up market is about to be challenged by the richest kid on the block. In just over 25 years, Microsoft have risen to the top of the personal computer business. 90% of the world's computers use their software, and they have a stock market worth of over $300 billion. Now, the world's most valuable company want to conquer the games machine business, and they don't like losing. Redmond, an hour outside Seattle, at Microsoft's Games HQ. A thousand people are plotting here to make their company the kingpin of the games machine business. Jay Allard, a 31-year-old multimillionaire, is not exactly a typical corporate executive, but he's been charged with developing Microsoft's rival to PlayStation 2, the enigmatically named Xbox. I think Xbox is critical to Microsoft. You know, if you look in your everyday life, how important is fun as a component of your success in life? It's critical. People that don't take themselves, uh, you know, don't have a sense of humor or take themselves too seriously usually aren't the most happy and successful people. Similarly, I think Microsoft uh, is taking itself a little too seriously these days, and it's time for us to break out, be a little bit more fun. And this prototype is what Microsoft's image of fun currently looks like. Due out next year, the big sell is that it'll be three times more powerful than PlayStation 2. We don't have to go that far because we still know the user account was tied. The Xbox high command meet in their war room to discuss how to topple Sony. 
he can share that track. No, with but you, take right? the, the stats example is a better example because in the stats. Robbie Bach is in charge of harnessing the talents of Allard and his team. Bach's job is to keep a close eye on the multi-billion-dollar budget and deadlines. This project has been on a um, very tight timeline from the beginning, with almost every aspect of it being tight. Um, we're right on the edge of having several big breakthroughs. We're also at the point where we got to start making the tough decisions. Sure, absolutely. Right? We're at the point where we've been kind of dreaming for a year or however long it's been, and we've had a lot of grand ideas, and some of those areas are just not going to be there for launch. Where can you manage that? Where the Xbox is Microsoft's biggest ever project. If you compare it to something like Windows 95, this will be dramatically bigger than that in terms of our focus, our effort, and our intent to be successful. Obviously, Windows 95 at the time was a big event, but when you look at what we're trying to do, we're trying to reach consumers around the world with a new message and a new product. That's gonna take a scale and a commitment and effort that Microsoft's never done before. Our focus and our attention is on the most compelling experiences. And the experiences on a video game console are all about the games. So really, when we've designed Xbox, we designed it for the game developer. It's really a, a system by game developers for game developers. And by appealing to their needs and their sensibilities, we actually think that we've created not only the most powerful, but the most approachable and friendly box for game developers to realize their creative visions. While designing what they believe to be PlayStation beating hardware, Jay and his colleagues draw inspiration from an old favorite. Seamus, baby. Oh, hey, it's good to see you're working hard today, too. Double or nothing, what do you say? Uh, I don't know, man. You got game today? I don't know, man. This is a 20-year-old machine called Robotron. Oh, this is the literature of video games. This is the penultimate video game. This is, this is the old man in the sea of video games. This is the Aesop's Fables of video Pay games. special attention to the score between player one and two. Ironically, it was at this gaming dinosaur that many key decisions were made about the kind of features the Xbox will offer. Really, a lot of the Xbox design uh, came, came into being at this machine, where Seamus, myself, and some other guys on the team would come down routinely to the Robotron machine after uh, hours and hours of work for late night uh, for some late night relaxation and we would uh, debate features and we'd have an argument about feature. I wanted it out, he wanted it in and we'd play for it instead of flipping for it or making some kind of educated decision. Instead we would earn it. Technology is not the only arena in which video games companies compete. Because when two of the world's most powerful businesses clash, it's credibility that becomes an issue too. And when the customers that both Microsoft and Sony are targeting, young, style-conscious adults, a notoriously fickle consumer group, it's clear that branding and image become critical. The Brixton Academy in London. Some of the best breakdancing crews around gather to compete in the finals of the UK B-Boy Championship. The competition has been sponsored for the last few years by PlayStation. Alan Wellsman was one of PlayStation's earliest employees. In 1995, he masterminded the UK launch of the original PlayStation. Now he's steering through the British release of the new model. The reason we get involved in sponsorships like this is because they are really at the cutting edge of youth culture. We've done an awful lot of it since the launch of PlayStation, ranging from snowboarding, breakdancing, uh, skateboarding events to festival culture and uh, putting on our own events as well that have revolved around gaming culture. So that's the kind of things we've done in the past and they're the kind of things I think where you gradually grow respect with the audience that you're marketing to. This was the key to Sony's success with the original PlayStation. With just a few weeks to launch, Alan is coordinating a major campaign to reinforce that message for PlayStation 2. It has to hit home, because as Sony are all too aware, the threat from Microsoft looms large. Microsoft probably has a different audience at the moment, but will be trying to step into that audience that PlayStation has nurtured for the last five years. 
The truth of it is that Microsoft have got deep pockets and have got a will to get involved in this business, so we expect them to be fierce competitors. Three weeks to go till PlayStation 2's launch, Alan Wellsman and his colleague Darren are in Los Angeles. They're here to oversee the filming of a multi-million pound TV commercial for the new machine. It's built around what they imagine to be a hip but mysterious new concept, the third place. It's all about the fact that it's the third place is something that's unique to the individual, and that's the whole point. It's, it's, it's different, exactly, exactly. It's yeah, everybody's yeah. own personal idea. What I really like is the fact that it is, it's that thing where you really aren't sure that you, and what we're going to get is it's going to definitely make the consumers feel that they won't be 100% sure of exactly what it is, or whether it's good or bad. It's going to it'll really disorient people and make them feel slightly uncomfortable, which, of course, for the audience we're going for is exactly what we're after. The ad is being directed by Hollywood legend David Lynch, creator of Blue Velvet and Twin Peaks. Like that. And you gotta see Jason. It's all gotta be orchestrated. Gary, put your thinking cap on. And then, then, then stop, and then whip it out with the face. What out, Gary? Jeez. It's Lynch's task to visualize the third place, a dimension somewhere between reality and fantasy, the PlayStation experience. A baffled Alan Wellsman lets the movie magician loose with his tricks. That's good, Dave. Okay. Fire! Okay, this is so beautiful. <laughs> if it's not too clear what it's about, then Lynch must be doing a good job. Excellent work, everyone. After the filming, Alan meets with the creative director, Trevor Beatty, the man behind PlayStation's advertising. I think it's just a case of picking out the, uh, picking out the really key audience, and you always get a bit of waste, you don't on the sides, but... We should be fine. I think it's almost Friday night Channel 4 slots is the kind of key. It's not about the product. That's, that's the great thing about it. It's a, it's a movement rather than a product. It's like a religion. It's, it's a way of life. In the advertising world, BT is regarded as something of a guru, and he's homed in on a stumbling block for PlayStation's new rival. I don't think Microsoft have an image problem. I think they have an image, and it's probably the wrong image um, for the one that's required for them to break this market. So they come from a different universe. They come from, they come from the office, they come from the work universe. Sony PlayStation has a massive credibility that, that Microsoft's money can't buy. You know, you can throw money at the problem, but it takes years of quality output to put yourself where PlayStation are. Bill isn't really an icon for this target audience, to be honest. You wouldn't think of him as the guy who walks around with three earrings in his ear and has you know, a different kind of clothing style than, than most people wear. And so you really have to think about him not as much as an icon for the target audience, but an icon for Microsoft's commitment to the platform. And the icons for the target audience are people like Jay Allard. Nighttime in central Seattle and multi-millionaire man of the people, Jay Allard is still hard at work, albeit in the relaxed environment of Seattle's bar scene. I want to ask an Amber. These are People are very passionate and grew up on video games and are looking for the next generation experience. So often when I'm in bars, I'll just kind of, you know, talk it up with the, the various patrons here and get, get their read on the way games are going and what they'd like to see and get some really good ideas and inspiration. So, uh, you know, it's, these places are flooded with who we're, who we're going to be talking to and selling to. Um, we, th we thought of an idea. Oh, yeah? You work in virtual sex into it. <laughs> make an action make an action pack for the guy and the girl. You can play you can play online, you know, with your with your girlfriend miles away and have sex virtually, of course. It's definitely an idea, but it's the product name is Xbox, not Triple Xbox. But it could be the Triple Xbox. <laughs> I'll tell them a little bit about Xbox and they'll say, "Well, what company is doing it?" And I say, "Microsoft." And sometimes you'll get the reaction, you know, Microsoft, what are they doing with the game system? Or Microsoft, you can't work there, you know, you seem too much like me um, to work at Microsoft. But often, often they'll come back and they'll say, wow, you know, that's a, I didn't think about Microsoft being a hardware company, but they probably will do a really good job at it. Microsoft know they've got some ground to make up in the credibility race, but they do have financial muscle, technical prowess, and a deadly serious desire to win. We absolutely believe we can be the number one leader in that market, market space, no question. And we wouldn't be in the market if we didn't think that was possible.